everyone. Uh, so thank you for uh, joining our weekly webcast today. Um, so today is actually the last webcast of our um, first webcast series. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, so far um, all the different topics that um, various members of the uh, ClinEdge and DCC teams have um, gone over. Um, hopefully you guys have been able to take away a few, um, a few pointers and, and uh, you know, some, some ideas on how to um, improve your um, overall site uh, operations. Um, today we're going to go over um, the kind of the importance of key performance indicators um, and what they are, um, how you measure them, some ideas on what to measure. Um, and uh, the, the point of going through this at the very end of the webcast is to you know, really tie everything together. Your key performance indicators um, essentially are kind of measurable um, values um, that uh, demonstrate kind of the health of your organization. Um, so these key performance indicators um, are going to be running everything from your company financials to um, the number of studies that are coming in to how productive each of your employees actually are, whether they be coordinators, investigators, support staff, um, name it. Um, so key performance indicators really tie everything that we talked about together. So everything from um, business development to finance to recruitment to um, all of those different areas, um, definitely they, uh, you know, they're going to be kind of that tied together. So how to, you know, in order to kind of understand key performance indicators, um, one of the major areas to, to really understand is something that we call utilization. Now, utilization is exactly what it sounds like. How much is a process or someone being utilized? Um, in this case, we're talking about people. So how much is a person, a staff member, being utilized? Now, there's a variety of different ways that you can structure this based on, um, you know, based on your site structure. So the purpose of understanding, you know, what utilization is, it allows a goal, you know, you to set a goal for a staff member. So um, if you tell a staff member that they should be handling a certain number of visits, processing a certain number of items, that's a goal that they need to hit. And in order to hit, you know, 100% utilization, they would need to hit that goal, which would tie into your KPI, which will go into just after this. These hold people accountable on an ongoing basis. So a lot of times sites will talk to us and say, well, how do I, uh, you know, how do I make sure that my coordinator is productive? You know, how do I, you know, my coordinator is, you know, asking me, you know, what do I need to be doing to be doing, you know, a, a good job? Um, and, you know, by having some kind of a utilization tracker or, um, you know, again, tying into the KPI, which we'll go over um, in a few minutes, um, that will make sure to keep the coordinators um, accountable um, for the duration of um, their tenure with your organization. This also, as you might imagine, allows um, staff members to see um, where they can improve on an ongoing basis. So if you're working with a staff member and they constantly know what goals they need to hit and more importantly, what goals you as you know a manager or a site owner or some, you know, some kind of overseer are looking at, they're gonna know what they need to focus on um, in order to, uh, you know, in order to move forward. This, as you, you know, as you might imagine, this basically tailors the person's, um, I'm trying to think of how I wanna say this, um, the person's focus to what is most important to the business, essentially. So, some areas that you may want to track for utilization. So again, with a coordinator, visits would be the big one. So, you know, how many visits do you expect them to do? How much is a visit worth? I've worked with some sites where, um, hey, actually some of the more kind of math logic focused site directors that I've worked with, they actually assign like a, a value um, to each visit. So uh, what I mean by that is, you know, a long detailed screening visit for say, uh, an Alzheimer's study may be worth a certain value, but you know a check-in on you know some sort of a, a maintenance 
uh, you know, aspect of the study um, may be less value because, of course, the time investment is less, um, the paperwork may be less. Um, so the amount of revenue generated from that visit may be less than, say, that screening visit. So uh, there's a variety of different ways that you can um, track your um, track your uh, utilization. So as I kind of started to mention there, this utilization, the best way to track it is to tie it to the actual revenue. So as I mentioned, you know, those visits being, you know, worth a certain amount of points, the way to get those points most easily is to actually see what the revenue generated from those visits would be. So in, in essence, you're able to take a, per, a staff member and actually see, well, how much money is that staff member responsible for? Um, now, what I mean by that is not necessarily that that staff member is doing everything possible um, and that their job is to bring that money in. No, but as, as we all know, a site lives and dies by a good coordinator. So if, excuse me, um, if you have a good coordinator and you know that they're maintaining um, you know, maintaining your studies, keeping the sponsor happy, keeping the monitors happy. Um, if they're able to continue to do that, then that means that they are going to essentially be making sure, ensuring that your site is going to get paid the revenue that is associated with the visits that those coordinators are managing. So what I'm kind of getting at is that when you're tracking these key performance indicators by person, when you see, okay, you know, my coordinator, John Smith, is managing these 20 visits, the 20 visits that he managed brought my site $30,000 last month, then you can assign basically a value to that person associated with, you know, his cost and his time. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on that um, towards the end of the webcast. So financials are, you know, definitely one of the most important items that you want to um, track. Um, you know, when you track the financials, um, there's a couple of different things you want to take a look at. You want to take a look at the cost associated with all of your, um, with all of your staff, overhead, all of those different things. And then, as I said, you want to take a look at the money that's being generated. So, how do you take a look at that cost? There's a few different ways you look at it. So, let's stick with our coordinator example. If you have a coordinator's salary, so let's say their salary is $40,000. Once you have that salary, now you'd add any kind of bonuses. So we work with sites that have a lot of creative bonus structures, um, which I know we talked about briefly in one of our previous webcasts um, on when to um, implement a bonus structure with the coordinator, how to potentially do that, um, what that may look like, how that motivates certain staff members. Um, but you'd add that bonus to that salary. Then you add what we call fringe when you're looking at a cost. So what is fringe? So fringe is everything else associated with an employee that, it, that a company essentially has as an expense. So if somebody costs $40,000 salary, and let's say just to make the math easy, let's say that, that $40,000 covers their salary, bonus, that's what that person is paid. So on top of that, as an employer, you know, typically we would pay everything from health insurance, taxes, 401k, um, you know, electric, um, you know, utilities, all of, you know, rent that's allocated to that person. All of those different things are all kind of encompassed in that fringe cost. So typically we conservatively estimate a fringe cost is 25%. So now you're at $40,000 plus 25%, 25% of $40,000 is $10,000. So now that employee costs $50,000. So now you have your total cost of the employee that covers what they make plus their additional cost of the business. Now what you want to do is you want to track that based on what they are actually bringing in. And typically we do this on a monthly basis. So if we have $50,000, um, you know, divide that by 12, what's your monthly cost? And that's going to be somewhere around 4,000, 4,200, we'll say 4,000, you know, just to make the math easy. Now you have your cost is 4,000. 
So, and uh, definitely, if anybody has any questions as I'm going through this, definitely let me know if I'm getting too heavy in the math uh, or if, uh, you, know, you, you know, you want me to clarify something. Um, definitely, this is a you know, very important way to, to track the health of your business um, and tie kind of everything together. But let's say that employee's monthly cost is $4,000. Now you want to track essentially what we call a labor cost. Now, a labor cost um, is one of your most important key performance indicator. Now, a labor cost essentially is how much does that labor cost over how much is actually being generated in revenue. So, if I have that labor cost, you know, that, that employee costs everything, salary, bonus, branch, $4,200. So, I want to make sure that that number is over a larger number so that my labor cost percentage is low. Typically, what we see in this industry, um, based on sites that we've worked with, sites that we manage, sites that we own, um, a healthy labor cost percentage is somewhere between 30 and 35%. So what does that mean? That means that a person, in order to be productively, you know, making, you know, essentially making money for the business, a person wants to be essentially responsible for three times the revenue that the revenue that they generate should be three times the cost that that employee is as an expense, um, if that makes any sense. So um, definitely when you're taking a look at these KPIs, and uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions about this after the webinar, I'm also happy to, to talk to, to you guys. Um, we also have different, um, you know, Excel templates and, and uh, you know, formulas that we can share. Um, that will automatically, um, you know, fit this type of information out um, and will automatically show this to you based on your company financials and based on the money being brought in. Uh, but it's definitely very important in order to um, make sure that we are, um, you know, that we're taking a look at this. Other financial KPIs that are important, um, you know, some of the details. So, again, you know, revenue, cost, all that kind of stuff is important. Um, Receivables is also important. And I know that last week, um, you know, Adam went through, uh, you know, how to track your receivables as a site and how important that is, even more so than some of the initial kind of negotiation phase that, you know, that I talked about um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so what you want to do is when you're looking at KPI for your site, it's not only important to see what revenue you're, you're bringing in or accruing over the cost of of the employees, but we also want to track how quickly we're actually getting the receivables from the sponsor. So, as we all know, um, as site people, um, sponsors are not the quickest um, at paying for uh, for the work that we do um, as, as, as site people. Um, so, you want to track that and, and, and see, you know, do we need to put more resources into following up on different um, on, on payments that are owed? Um, that's all important. So what we do, we track a couple of uh, kind of major items. So what are your total receivables? How much money is out that has not yet been paid? What are your receive outstanding receivables days? So what does that mean? That that kind of means on a recurring basis, how long does it typically take for your for your payments to be made? Um, and so there's a formula that we use that basically tracks the average amount of time that it takes. For receivables to be um, to be paid, um, and if that number gets too high, we know that we need to spend a little bit more time on actually tracking um, how we are, um, you know, how we're you know managing our receivables and making sure that they're not getting too large. So those are kind of the financial KPIs. Again, if anybody has any questions on uh, those KPIs, how those are calculated. How those are, you know, if how those are important, you know, which ones are important, definitely, you know, feel free to ask a question. One of the other areas that I want to take a look at, um, which is, you know, related, um, but, you know, kind of in a, in a different sphere, um, are kind of the non financial KPIs. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the financial KPIs, but as we all know, you know, finances aren't everything. There's plenty of other areas that, um, you know, are not directly tied to a financial number that are important to track the health of the site business. So, 
you want to track basically a number of different items. So we already kind of mentioned this at the beginning, but number of visits per four days is definitely important. Um, and again, that can be tracked, you know, tracked to revenue. Number of screen failures. Now, I've seen some sites do this a variety of different ways. So screen failures, as we all know, are not all created equal. And it's not all studies are created equal, I should say. So you're going to have some studies where your screen fail ratio is very high, but it might be a very tough study um, that, you know, based on labs and everything, you know, it's, it's tough to qualify patients. But then you may have some studies where screen fail ratios are low. So I bring this up as, as an area that's definitely worth tracking, but I would suggest tracking it more on a study-specific basis. And the reason why you want to track this is not only to make sure that your staff is not over-screening, you know, and, and that you're not missing patients that you may otherwise be able to enroll, but it's also important for the future. So we talked about this a little bit when we talked about our business development side, um, you know, about a month or so ago. Um, but if you're reaching out for a new study and you're negotiating a budget or you're filling out a feasibility, uh, trying to determine what a realistic screen fail ratio is, having that previous uh, backup documentation about screen fail ratios in the past, that's always going to be beneficial. So definitely that's an important KPI to continue to track. Obvious things like how many patients are being randomized, you know, number of significant deviations, um, number of maintenance studies, number of enrolling studies. Just to get an overall health of, of your site, also important to continue to track. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the most important way to track this is, you know, over time. So, you know, you'll have your metrics for one month, next month, next month, so on, to see are you trending up or trending down. There's also kind of a, a lot of KPIs that you can track to basically anticipate the future health of your business. A lot of this is on the business development side. So on your pipeline, how many feasibilities um, have you submitted um, in the last month? Um, you know, were they in any competitive indications that you've been looking for? Um, how many PSVs um, have been scheduled? You know, how many people are coming in to evaluate you for, you know, for future studies? You can break this down even further. You know, if you've got a dedicated business development person um, or team, you're going to want to track KPIs on them. So it could be anything from how many calls are being made, how many you know outreach attempts are being made, how many sponsors did we talk to, um, you know, how many uh, you know capability presentations have you done, you know, and different sites have different sizes, you know, need some of these KPIs, don't need other KPIs, uh, but it's definitely important to get a, a comprehensive overview of all of these different items. Patient recruitment. So, you know, a number of, again, this kind of goes with your, your screen fail conversation, but pre-screen passes, pre-screen fail, you know, again, important to track those to make sure that we're not over-screening, you know, over pre screen patients. Number of calls out, how many visits are coming in from your pre-screener, um, how many reimbursable visits are being scheduled by the free screen. So what is that? And that's kind of what we talked about um, when it came to the, uh, the coordinator side. So when you have the coordinator trying to see how, what visits they're managing to see what their worth is, what their value is financially to the business, you do the same thing on the pre-screening side. How many pre-screens are turning into screens or turning into randomization that are turning into reimbursable visits? I mean, obviously your screens are reimbursable as well. As well. Um, the idea with tracking those reimbursable visits as well is trying to see, you know, are my screen cell ratios off? So if your pre-screening is good, um, but, you know, you're still screen failing too much that is leading to more non-reimbursable visits, obviously that's something that you want to take a look at as well. On the advertising side, there's also total, you know, total advertising dollars, um, how many leads are coming from your advertising, your cost for randomization. Um, so there's a variety of different uh, you know, areas there as well that you want to make sure that you, uh, that you track. So, um, you know, and that's it. I've kind of gone through, you know, a brief overview. And this is definitely something that, uh, you know, some of my colleagues have done kind of longer, um, drawn out, uh, you know, detailed um, talks about this. And 
webinars about this and, and, and presentations and workshops. This is tracking your KPIs as a business is one of the most important things you can do to really maintain, you know, the you know, an idea of the health of your business. If anybody would like to have it um, or to see it, um, we do have um, basically total, and now not all of these items may apply to each site, uh, but we do have kind of full KPI breakdowns that we use um, for our site um, that track all of these different items. So if anybody would be interested in seeing this, we're happy to provide this as well um, as something that we can take a look at. Um, so um, again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to, um, oh, I do see one question here. Um, okay, so this is a good question. So this person asked me, um, so how do you, how, you know, it sounds like this is kind of a small site, um, and their question is basically, how do you compile these KPIs? You know, how do you have the resources that all of this, you know, sounds great, but it doesn't, um, I guess what this person is trying to ask is, you know, it doesn't, you know, it may be a lot of time to track these KPIs that could be better spent on, you know, money generating. So it's definitely a good point. It's definitely a good question, and it's a question we get often when we give this type of a presentation. Um, and uh, what we would suggest, and what we've seen be successful, uh, especially with sites that are, um, you know, that have a particular person who's responsible for finance, who's responsible for patient recruitment, business development, is to actually have that person generate their own KPI. So you go over the goals of that person Say this, you know, say, you know, I expect you to hit these six items. So you need to hit this criteria. And that person actually goes through, they generate their own report um, based on, you know, if you guys are utilizing a CCMS platform or any other platform, this can be done in Excel. Um, but they would essentially generate their own report and provide that to, you know, to their, their boss or their manager, site owner, site director, whoever it may be, whoever the appropriate person is. Um, and so they would actually have a meeting with that person and go over each of those um, and go over each of those items. So it's definitely, um, you know, it's definitely important to, you know, in order to keep somebody accountable, how you would be able to, um, you know, to have them do their own KPI. Now, I know this person's question is specifically in reference to um, a small site. Now, if you're a small site, um, that, you know, if you're just, you know, one person, one site director with, you know, I know we've worked with sites where it's a site director, a site coordinator, and a PI, or maybe just a coordinator and a PI. Whoever is essentially managing the financials for the business and managing the growth of the business, you know, until you guys get big enough, this would be something that, you know, even though it is a time investment, you know, it is, it is, very, you know, very, you know, very important. I have another question here coming up. Um, what are the most important KPIs in a poorly resourced site? So another good question, um, as we know that this is, uh, you know, we know that again, this, this, you know, would be a time, you know, consuming process, very related to the last question, but some of the more important KPIs to take a look at, um, to, you know, kind of kickstart your site and make sure that you grow. Financials, so making sure that you know what your labor cost is if you are, you know, making money essentially based on time and expense of your employees. Um, and I really think that the, you know, kind of recruitment screening, um, you know, KPIs are going to be, you know, some of your most important KPIs as well. Um, and the reason why is, you know, we find that recruitment ends up being, you know, the, you know, the biggest barrier to, to a site's growth. So if you can really lock down, you know, if you get the studies in, now this is obviously a thing you have studies. You don't have studies, obviously you have to start with the study. So assuming you're a poorly resourced site, but you do have studies, but you just have kind of limited staff, really locking down on that recruitment, looking at the pre-screener. How are we pre-screening? Um, how many pre-screens are leading to screens that are leading to randomization? Are we seeing a lot of pre-screens that are getting to screens where they're screen failing on stuff that can easily be caught in a pre-screen? Those are the areas where we really see that you know, struggling kind of poorly resourced sites really, um, you know, really can help improve their operation um, very quickly. 
So um, let me see. I have a couple more questions coming in here. I might have time for one more. Um, how do you manage the use of KPIs and metrics without a negative reaction to micromanagement? So it's another good question. Um, and I think it's all about how you present it. Um, and, you know, if you, from what I've found in my own experience, people like to know what their goals are and they like to know what they're being measured on. So, you know, if I'm providing, you know, these metrics to a person and I say, you know, hey, we're going to be tracking, you know, these six things, um, you know, you're doing a great job with, you know, one, two, and three, we can improve on four, five, and six, um, but I'm going to have a meeting with you once a month, you know, these are the metrics you need to hit, you know, you've been doing well at this, you use the, you know, either a process have or maybe you know, for a small site developing site, maybe you need to help develop the process in order to hit those metrics. But regardless, these are the metrics you need to hit. If you hit these metrics, these are the things that we're going to see. We're going to hire more team members. You know, we're going to continue to build your team. You know, maybe there's advancement possibilities. But really tying the employees into, you know, what they're providing to, to, to you as an organization and what they uh, you know what they are, what their value drivers are. Um, I think is typically a positive thing, and it's, again, it's more about how you frame it. Obviously, if you go to the person and say, "Hey, I'm going to track these six things," um, and every day, "Hey, you know, I don't see that. You know, you only had two visits yesterday. Uh, you only had one visit today. I need to see six visits today to make up for it." This is more of a general health of the business, where you know each month. You know, oh, you had 30 visits this, this month. I'd love to see you hit it to 40. And then you would track it each month. And, you know, if you hit 40, if you consistently hit 50 visits, then we need to, you know, grow as a site. You know, there's, there's you know, other things that we, can, you know, that we can do there. So it's really about the messaging. And it's really about how do you show the person that they're providing value to the organization and what are those value drivers. So, uh, so that's it. So that's it. Um, if there's any other questions that you guys have, um, definitely feel free to um, shoot them over to me in email. Um, you can reach me at scott, S-C-O-T-T, at btcsites.com. Um, happy to have any offline conversations with anybody. Um, I know I can speak on behalf of Christian, myself, and the rest of the ClinEdge and BCC team that have been involved in these webinars. Uh, but we've been really excited about um, the response we've had. Um, to these weekly webcasts, um, and we hope that you guys have all enjoyed it. Um, any feedback that you guys have as far as if you enjoyed it, um, how, uh, you know, if you learned anything from it, um, if we do these in the future, um, what we may um, want to focus more on, if there's a format change, if you guys were able to hear us well, any feedback at all that you guys have, we definitely would be willing to hear it. Um, you know, we are working on kind of our next uh, you know, webcast series for the future, so definitely take a look out for that. Um, but uh, until next time, I will talk to all of you guys later. So, bye.